Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Debates. I am your friend Amudan Sutivel, and today we will see a uh, last topic for the exception handling. Uh, yeah, how we can handle exception inside the static blocks, right? So we have learned so far how to do proper exception handling, how to create our own custom exception, runtime exceptions, and other stuff. But there is a thing that we have missed out. Okay, so I have voluntarily not spoken about this in the in the last video because I thought it 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 will. no confuse you much so i thought i'll i'll take it as a separate video uh, so in this video we're going to see uh, uh, why to why we have to use a try catch block inside a static block so it's a, it's a kind of mandate you have to use a try catch if you want to handle some checked exceptions we'll understand why and we'll also check whether we can throw any runtime exception inside static blocks and we can also see how can i uh, you know how we can uh, terminate the program uh, you know when there is an exception happening inside the uh, static block so we'll also see about there is a method called exit in uh, system class we will see about that what is the usage usage of this particular method and at last we'll also think about uh, whether we can use the static blocks in our framework or we can remove it again you might be wondering why this guy added a static block and why he is thinking about removing it yeah we will see that all in detail in the coming video in the below video right so so here without wasting much time let me go here and uh, let me open the property utils okay this is what we have so we have fixed the exception here we have thrown a property file usage exception everything is fine but if you notice there is a static block where we are actually trying to read a code we are using try with resources con uh, construct and we are catching the exceptions everything looks fine but if you notice um, you know there is uh, uh, you know problem here okay we are catching the exception suppose if there is a invalid configuration file path okay like previously explained if i catch that my program you know will not terminate it will go on further and it will you know throw some null pointer exception in in some other place so the actual error message is the config file path is missing is 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 actually concealed or masked so suppose for example i am going here i am just uh, changing this property file is invalid uh maybe this path is not there now okay let's try to run this whole test and then see what's happening okay so if you notice this is file not found that's absolutely fine we are we are sure that this config config dot properties is not available but it's also throwing me another exception okay this is what we right the program doesn't stop because we have used a catch block here Okay, that's why it is also throwing property name over right reports is not found. Please check configured properties because it went on to proceed. Because we have catched the exception, the program termination didn't happen. It continued and then while trying to read some property value, it throws this particular exception. Okay, this is all good. Uh, the only problem is it throws two exception where I am only interested in the first part. Okay, and most importantly, I want to terminate the program here. that's when we used all the runtime exceptions right in the previous case uh, in the excel utils so through new maybe this time i'll create a new exception because last time we have created invalid path for excel exception maybe through new invalid path for uh, property file exception and i can pass my own uh, error message like uh, please check the path of the configuration file config file good now i i have to create this exception so where i have to create uh, let me try to create this using it's not in com.umb.utils it's uh, exceptions okay i think the class name is correct yes so let me create this Again, instead of directly extending the exception, I want to extend the framework exception. Okay, this is what we have done before, right? We have we have a runtime exception, and we can handle this. Add a constructor. Yes, I want to add this constructor. I also want to add one more constructor. Okay, and this constructor will accept a throwable the class, whatever the thing that's coming. I am just delegating or propagating back to the parent. so everything looks kind i again i will throw this suppress warning that's absolutely fine if you notice there is invalid path for excel and invalid path for property file again you may also have you may also read a json file you may also read a, a yaml file in your framework so in that case there is a instead of directly extending this to a framework exception i can create one more exception uh, maybe 
uh, class, uh, what is what I don't know, maybe invalid path for files exception. Something like this. And then this guy is extending your framework exception. I can create a constructor for this. Okay, that's fine. One more constructor, overload a constructor, so accepts a throwable. Again, I have explained detail in the last video why we need to have this constructor. If you want to customize your stack trace, you can use this. Okay, maybe more meaningful name for the variable. Okay, good. And now all my Excel exception will, will not extend this. Instead, it will extend invalid path for files exception. Okay, the same way. Uh, files uh, property file invalid path for files exception it's coming from here good now it looks more clear okay the class has seven parents is greater than five authorized okay maybe since uh, the number of uh, hierarchy is more the sonar lint is uh, suggesting me maybe you can club all these things together yeah it's up to you uh, how you want to decide but for now I am going to my property utils and I am throwing a invalid property file exception. That's good. Now everything is gone. Let's see this time whether the execution is getting stopped or not. Because whenever we throw a runtime exception, because this this invalid path path for property file exception is a is a runtime exception, right? So so the the program should terminate. Okay, and there should be only one error message that clearly conveys there is a problem with my config file. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Now it is telling me, please check the path for the config file. Okay. And there is something other messages also coming. There is exception in initializer error, which is really confusing because it didn't, the program didn't stop here. It went on to, you know, run my before suite. If you notice in the before suite, uh, I have done some operation. Okay. Like initializing the reports. So it went to start to you know create a new report and then while reading from the report it, it got some error and then it showed some error okay and all these things are happened because there is a problem with the static block okay that's what this exception is all about but still i don't want to do all these things okay i don't want to even try okay the reason the program didn't stop there because okay this is a static block guys static block is executed even before your main method okay this this actually executes when the class loader loads your class file into the memory okay so it is way before your main method so there is even if i throw something like this there is no java virtual machine to to handle this for me so what i can do in that case okay no main method for that to catch it so what i can do in that case okay Instead of writing all these things, maybe I can, uh, you know, write a system. Uh, you can use system dot exit and then zero. Again, if you throw an exception, okay, the code will not get stopped because uh, you know uh, this 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 will not be executed. So I cannot. I, I don't have to handle this. Okay, I just want to exit this. Maybe I can customize the stack trace okay or i can print the stack trace e dot print stack trace okay will do the job for me okay uh, so this is all about it guys so if you want to terminate the program okay uh, in a static block you can use a system class and exit method and zero passing zero means it will close the you know uh, uh, stop the program uh, gracefully okay it will try to do all the things slowly and it will try to gracefully stop the uh, program so let's see whether what uh, it's working fine or not. This time it's just showing me config dot properties, and then it's also showing me, um, you know, it doesn't went on to uh, you know proceed with uh, running the other stuff. Only this particular thing exception happened, and my program got closed. Again, you can add this here as well. Okay, now the implementations are almost same. Okay, so what I can do, I can instead of writing two things like this, I can cut this. Okay. And then I can add it here itself. But if, it, but if you notice, this IO exception is the parent exception for this file not found exception. So I don't even need this catch block. Okay. Okay. I can. I don't even have to declare this here. So even if the there is a file not found, this this alone, this catch block alone can handle all these things. Even the if you try to run the test, okay, it'll still correctly point out there is a file not found exception. 
again if you want to handle both of these things differently then you can use two different but in our case i'm just printing the stack trace and then i'm exiting the program so that's why i combined these two catch blocks into one particular catch block so now we have you know a static block just to you know set the, uh, you know do some uh, static initialization of our hash map it's all good but if you imagine we cannot handle the exception properly i cannot throw over i cannot throw something a custom error you know exception though whatever the exception that it has thrown it it's sufficient in this case but i cannot do much operation with this so maybe you can also think about removing the static block okay and then create a new method and then call this method here okay maybe you can put some counter variable and then check uh, if the if there is a if the hash map is null if it's empty then you can call this method otherwise don't call this method okay so it is up to you to decide whether you have to use a static block or not okay so there are advantages with static block there are also you know problems or uh, maybe the things that we need to keenly observe in terms of static block okay so based on this you can decide whether you need a static block or not but for now i i will keep the static block here okay maybe you, if you don't want you can remove it as well okay thanks all for listening to me you all have a very good day i will see you all in another good video thank you guys bye